Morning guys, Jubopolis here. Today we got another install coming at you and it's going to be some Mopar genuine parts. We got the seven way pin connector for the trailer, for the uh, trailer hitch I installed about a month and a half ago. And one other odd and end to uh, finally piece that little project together. I hope you enjoy the video and we're going to have a good time. Alright guys, I know I usually give it a beer rating. So today's beer rating is going to be three beers. It's like 10 a.m. so I'm sticking with my coffee today. But three beer job. This is going to be a pain in the rear end. I'm not excited to do it. No, like I'm really not excited to do this. <laughs> Alright guys, so for today's install, you need a 3 8 drive ratchet, a 10 millimeter deep socket, if you can actually somehow find it, a 13 millimeter deep socket, a T40 Torx bit, some wire cutters, snips, you shouldn't need strippers, but keep them out just in case, needle nose pliers, some plastic pry bars, as well as you could need a rivet gun because we're going to remove some of the rivets on the fender liner. All right, guys, so here's a quick shot of everything you're going to need for the install that comes in the kit. Like I said, I'm not excited about this. We also have a little P state resistance to finish off the hitch. We're going to be disconnecting our battery. We have three battery grounds we have a 10 millimeter bolt here, a 13 millimeter bolt here, and another 10 millimeter bolt here. So now we're just going to get all this stuff disconnected. guys so first step back here we're gonna come back to the Jeep and we're going to be removing this center portion of the carpet right here all you got to do is pull towards you a little bit and it slides right out of place boom magic all right next we're gonna be removing the panel here that covers up your jack and also holds the bolts for when you take your doors off next step is gonna be to remove this carpeted piece that holds your gear tie down it's gonna be your t40 torx bit there's three bolts and you should be able to take it right off. Next step is going to be to remove the tail light. We can do so by accessing this plastic panel down here with the plastic pry tool. That'll pop right off and then it should be your 10 millimeter bolt. Make sure we go ahead and retain this plastic screw so we don't lose it. All right, guys, with the screw removed, we can then go and just pull our tail light out of place and disconnect the wiring harness. You're going to pull this red tab up towards you if it wants to move. Pull the red tab towards you and then push the pin. Once that's disconnected, you can then go and set your tail light aside. All right, so next step, we're gonna be removing this panel that ha houses the subwoofer, and we're gonna start that by removing this little piece that helps retain the seat belt. We've got two body clips on each side. Once they pop three free, you're good. All right, next we're going to remove this screw that's holding in the subwoofer. And once that's done, we can then go and start pulling all the body clips out of the subwoofer that holds it into the body. On, you want to disconnect the wiring harness that holds the subwoofer together. And with the wiring harness disconnected, you can then go and move your subwoofer and discard it out of the vehicle until reinstallation. Alright, so our next step is going to be to remove this paneling on the B pillar. 
that also houses your wiring harness for your door and your door stops. And you're kind of just going to roll forward and you're going to start feeling everything pop. Start moving, removing the front portion of the kick panel. Just kind of got to push center. We can actually should, we actually should be able to remove this center piece completely now. Okay, with all that done, we can now start disconnecting the front portion of the kick panel here. It's going to benefit you to take your floor mat out as well. That way, you're not pushing against the rubber. loosened up we should be able to run all the wires we need to all right our next step is going to be removing the glove box you can do so by opening the glove box and there's a rubber piece right behind the center of it push that rubber piece forward and then you should be able to drop it right out there's also a little detention there and that'll just pop out of place our next step is going to be accessing this fuse box right here. And once we access this fuse box, we're actually going to be using the wire, some of the wiring that's been provided. So to open this fuse box, all I can do is pull these two clips right here, and then the top pops right off. All right, so we're going to be disconnecting this first stud here. This is where we're going to place the power for our wiring harness. So we're just going to go ahead and take our 10 millimeter deep well socket. We're going to disconnect this. Okay guys, so this is gonna be your power harness right here. Um, it took us a kind of a second to find because the directions give a very obscure picture for what this is. It just shows this harness portion. So we were looking for that like lost chicken with no heads. And it's actually this entire wiring harness and cord. It's, it's a lot of stuff right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put this on our stud. And once we put this on our stud, we'll leave it loose. That way we can then zip tie everything and make it look all nice and clean whenever we're done. That right there for now. All right, guys, so we're going to tighten this bolt up. All right, so what we can do here is we can actually put two zip ties around this main wiring harness here as well. And they have to be 100 millimeters apart or your entire install's fucked. So once we do that, we're going to take the rest of this wire. We're going to untangle it real fast. Once we untangle it, we're then going to feed it down into the engine compartment. That way we can access it from the bottom of the Jeep to get a wiring harness to go through this firing wall. This firewall. This firing wall. I'm a genius. Firing wall. Alright, so once we have this, we're going to pull all the slack down. That way we have all the wire we're going to need. This has to go run the entire body of the Jeep. take this coat hanger and we're going to go through the firewall on the inside of the vehicle. Once it's inside, I'm then going to tape the wire to this and pull it back through. I'm doing it this way so I can attempt to not break the rivets off of the fender if I don't have to because I don't have a rivet gun. I'm too lazy to go get a rivet gun currently for three plastic rivets. I feel like I can do it this way and it'll work just fine. The, fire, the grommet for the firewall is going to be up here in the right. You'll be able to see it if you poke your head down. Alright, so with the coat hanger through, we can now tape the wire to the coat hanger and pull it back to the firewall. So up here, you, you can see this coat hanger going through and the red and black wires from my CB radio. That is where the grommet actually is. So now I'm going to be pulling this through with the wire to run through the length of the Jeep. All 
right, so now we're gonna start running this wire behind the kick panel. And we can do so just by going to the top right here and just getting it behind, as opposed to actually pulling everything out and being a huge pain in the butt. It's gonna look just as clean. Once we get back here, we can then go and reach up and we can grab it on this side. We can go along and do it across the entire kick panel. All right, so Jeep was nice enough to actually include these little clips here in the plastic paneling to hold this wire up. So we're just gonna go ahead and clip it all the way through and that's gonna keep it nice and tucked and clean. All right, so with the wire tucked and cleaned up around the kickboard, we're gonna then pull this behind the carpet over here and run it along the side of the Jeep. So this wire is going to be going through this grommet right here and we're going to take a screwdriver, poke a hole real fast and then thread this guy through. I have to take the long screwdriver, we're going to poke our hole. Our next step is to be taking this light blue wire and running it back through the hole in the grommet towards the front as well as there is a circle connector that's gonna go onto a post as a ground. All right, with the light blue wire and the post through, we're gonna then pull it to the front of the Jeep and then wire it along the sides like we did the red wire coming through. This post right here is where you're gonna be attaching that wiring one. This is underneath the carpet on the passenger side. power into this clip right here and we're going to pin this essentially and from there you can now connect the wiring harness to the power wiring harness and lock your gray locking tab into place all right so now we're going to be installing the control module for this guy and jeep is so kind to give us an alcohol wipe to clean off the surface before we stick it onto the body So with that done, we can let that dry a little bit. And this right here is actually the limiting strap and the hinge for the tailgate. So we have to make sure that we stick this in a place that it's not gonna interfere with this guy right here. Now that the alcohol is more or less dry, we can then go and stick our control module down. We're actually gonna put it as low as we possibly can upside down. So it's nice and easy, connect that connector. And give it a nice firm push so you ensure that it's stuck to the body. All right, so next we're gonna take this giant wiring harness and we're going to plug it into the control module we just stuck down. We're gonna flip this switch up and that's gonna lock it into place. Similar to the way your doors work. Not going anywhere. Now we're gonna take this female harness and this male harness for our taillights, we're gonna plug them in. Lock that right into place. Go. All right, so we're gonna be taking all these wires and feeding them through the body of the Jeep. Some of them are gonna go to the other taillight and the rest of them are gonna go to our seven pin connector. Right. All right, so now we're gonna take these yellow wires 
and we're gonna run it along the frame rail up to the passenger side tail light that we just removed. All right, so next we're gonna have to repin this guy with those two yellow wires that we just ran through. So we're gonna end up removing these with a small pick in one side. There's a little hole you can stab it through and then pry up. Okay, so now we're going to be pinning the seven pin connector and here's a great forewarning once you put these in there they're pretty stuck and you're not really going to be able to get them out too easily so make sure you put them in the right place so the white is going to go into cavity a and these are labeled Cavity C. Green is in cavity D. Red will be in cavity E. Brown will be in cavity F. And yellow will be in cavity G. All right, now you just give them a little tug, make sure they're all in place. Good to go. Okay, so the Jeep gives you this locking tab to keep all the wires in place. And you have to get it at a kind of a weird angle and then slap, slide it right in. And you're good to go, the wires aren't going anywhere. All right, so now we're gonna place the bracket that's gonna hold our seven pin connector. Jeep has pre-hill, pre, Jeep has pre-drilled holes from the factory and they supplied two bolts. To tighten this guy up, they are 16 millimeters. Okay, so now we're gonna slap through our seven pin connectors. Just gonna push right in snap into place. We can then go and connect it in the back. All right, so now we can go ahead and reinstall our passenger side tail light.
much. Now with all that done, we can go ahead and reconnect our grounds. Before I forget to add the piece de resistance. All right, guys, just about wraps it up for today's video. All you got to do is put the interior back together. Just follow the steps in the video prior, but in reverse, it's super easy. I have full confidence that you guys can do it. All right, so that wraps it up. If you want to see my stuff before YouTube gets it, follow me on Instagram at Project Reaper JL. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I needed to get this done so I can tow the jet ski I just bought whenever it comes in. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be coming on the channel in the next couple months. I have more projects lined up, and that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.